Hey guys, Harv here, and welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program. This is the Test Pilot, the series in which we take viewer-submitted ships, test them out, and then hopefully make some improvements to them. Today we have a craft submitted by Alan Schrader. Thank you very much for the entry, and your ship, not because it is easy, is actually an Apollo-style... Apollo-style mission, and it's absolutely brilliant. I love it so much. Now usually this series I try and keep its first impressions but the problem with that is that when a ship comes along that's so complicated and intricate in the attempt to be minimalistic which this pulls off so well. Let's just get the mission underway before I carry on talking because I have limited time. So three, two, one, lift off. Very slow ascent which is something we might want to improve but it's definitely worth it. But um Yes, this ship uses action groups uh, in order to make everything work smoothly. Now, there's one thing that I didn't get, and uh, on the the forum link that Alan provided me in order to learn about the action groups um, and to understand them fully, actually is broken. I'm not sure if the forums are down now or whatever, but I went into the VAB, I had a look at it, and I thought I got the gist of it. But in order to get rid of the escape the ascent module, the escape tower, uh, you actually have to press zero, uh, um, which, that, that's action group 10, custom action group 10 that is, and I didn't know how to get rid of that easily and that made some problems which delayed things which meant that I didn't do the turnaround completely properly, properly. so oh well, here we are, getting things underway and everything is cool, so Nothing has really been affected by that, just my time, <laughs> which I need to put into these videos, so that's fine anyway. So here we are. Now I have to say, the ship looks so good, the profile of it is brilliant, and how he's done the engines with this, uh, these fuselages leading inwards, I didn't even know you could do that, let alone how good it would work. It actually is extremely good, it's a very minimalistic design and it works beautifully. <sighs> oh, at least I don't know if it works absolutely perfectly. I haven't actually been able to complete the mission yet. But oh well, here we are, and we are nearly ready for our gravity turn, and the first ascent stage has nearly run out. So we can, in three, two, one, cut out, detach, and burn. Now this next ascent stage is pretty interesting, it's, you can see we're slowing down so there can't be that much thrust behind it, behind it, but what it is, is it's made up of LV-99 engines, both the single big version, oh that's not an LV-99 anymore, that's a Rockmax Poodle, I forgot about that, <laughs> and four LV-99s on the outside, I'm actually going to lock their gimbals in an attempt to prevent swaying too much. There we go, the middle one should still be, there we go. Alright, doesn't, probably doesn't help that much, but I think it might. Um, but yeah, it's, it's actually a pretty efficient stage, and it's running off of this one tank. Which is pretty impressive, very impressive indeed. Now, I'm going to get rid of the escape tower soon, I'm not entirely sure when. I think I might do it after getting rid of this stage. But, the thing is, I'm not sure whether it's going to go to this side or not. Um, or if we're just going to crash straight into it. So what I'm going to do is point upwards a bit more and we shall decouple the ascent tower like so. There we go. And now we'll point over a bit more just to make sure we don't come near to it. I didn't think that would be a problem anyway. It does actually um, go pretty far by the time those boosters have run out. So I doubt we would hit it in the first place. But, oh well. It certainly went off without a problem, and that was something I was concerned about. And I'm glad it worked, absolutely. So yeah, this is going very well. This There are so many things about the design that I want to incorporate into my future vehicles. Like the multiple engine, the use of multiple engines. I didn't even know that it was capable of doing that. <laughs> and the revelation is pleasing, absolutely pleasing. Alright, we are making good progress. We are we our trajectory will take us out of the atmosphere now, which is good. 
But the thing is, next we have an OV99 engine, so I'm actually going to stay at this orientation. I'm going to stay at this angle and keep on burning, instead of carrying on with the gravity turn. In the attempt to actually make the less powerful engine work. <laughs> okay, and we have run out of fuel, and we fire, and fire the next engine. There we go. Hopefully this will work. Hopefully. Now it turns out that in this lander, you can see there's like a there's a very small toroidal fuel tank. There are actually four of them crammed in there, I think, or possibly even five, somehow crammed inside this little lander, which is incredible. Purely incredible. <laughs> Again, things I didn't know was possible. This is everything this ship does displays a very, very adept understanding of the game and it shows a process that involved a lot of refinement and a lot of testing which I appreciate and I'm glad it would turn out so well. So here we are, we are getting into low Kerbin orbit. Now that counter, time until apoapsis, is counting down which is good. It means we are not burning at a high enough angle in order to actually increase our apoapsis too much. By the time we get to the apoapsis, we should be going fast enough to circularize. That's what I'm hoping for. That is the perfect descent profile. I don't know if we're going to meet that. We have a pretty high apoapsis, but um, I think we're doing okay. I'm going to match our velocity vector, which is the uh, prograde position, and see how things go. Might want to quick save. Um, and actually just do that quickly. I really don't want anything to go wrong. There we go. Very nice. Very nice indeed. <laughs> Such a small ship, and yet the profile of it and everything is so good. Like, it's really small and thin, and yet it doesn't wobble any troubling amount, which is brilliant. Yeah, that abwapsis is getting pretty high, but oh well. I'm not too concerned with that. Perhaps it's not the most efficient way to do things, but it doesn't really matter at this point. Seeing as we have these super efficient engines working for us. Where is the moon, in fact? That's something we should be concerned about. Probably should have waited until the correct launch window. Nah, I think it's okay. I think we'll do okay. We'll stay at this orientation for now. Try and keep things going. Actually, no, we'll, we'll point pro-raid. I think that's probably what we need to do. There we go. Things are going well. Just the apoapsis that is slightly irritating me. Now I'm considering, at this point in time, I'm thinking about maybe, maybe I should cut the post commentary Harvey, give him some time to breathe and toy, talk and enjoy himself. But um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. This might be a boring part of the video. Something that's quite hard for me to judge what is boring and what isn't, because people like live commentary, but at the same time, it's not as informative. I think at this point, we shall cut to post commentary Harvey, and we'll see how the mission progresses. Alright, so, hi, post commentary Harvey here. <laughs> We have this 130 meter, 130,000 meter apoapsis, and that does seem a bit high, doesn't it? It does seem a bit high indeed. Pitching up just a little, uh, because we're trying to make sure we stay as close to the apoapsis as possible while circularizing our orbit. We certainly don't want to get too far past it, otherwise we might end up lowering our apoapsis, which might help. Just just saying. Bearing in mind this is post-commentary Harvey, which means post-commentary means I have already played and recorded the video. So, I know what the outcome of this mission is. And I have to say, it might be disappointing for a few, for a few of you, but I think I'm okay with it, to be honest. And I think every rocketry enthusiast should be. But anyway, let's carry on with the mission, right? Let's actually focus on the here and now. So we've got our low Kerth orbit. Low Kerbin! Oh god, I called it Kerth. Oh man, I'm sorry. Wow. Man, I'm glad glad I corrected myself. But anyway, low Kerbin orbit. And we are now burning, we are performing our transmunar injection. Transmunar injection. Look at that fuel. 
That seems a bit low, doesn't it? The fuel count on this engine does not seem like it's enough to get us to the moon. And in fact, it isn't. So we eject that and we start up the next stage, hoping that Alan has done correct. And he has. Unfortunately, I don't think I have. I think that 130 meter apparatus costs us more fuel than we can afford. These engines are pretty efficient, but they're not that efficient. So I have to think, what am I going to do? If I, initiate the, if I initiate the next stage, what happens? Let's trust, and that happens. We detach from the lander, and the fuel, uh, the separator stays there. Okay, so we RCS our way back in. We're going to connect with the lander, and hopefully use the command module, fuel, and engines to get us all the way to the moon. It's a plan. We don't have much fuel on this return stage, but I think that because of how, of just how efficient this engine is, it may be able to work. So we dock, there we go, and we quickly spin ourselves round, start up the engine and make sure the other engine is actually off. That's something we don't want happening, burning against each other. And there we go, we start burning. And our apparatus, our apparatus increases pretty fast, and our periapsis decreases. Oh no, no, our apparatus increases pretty fast, and our fuel increase uh, decreases pretty slowly all things considering all things considered i can barely talk but the thing is this is our return fuel this is the fuel we're going to use to get back from the moon which doesn't put the mission in a particularly soft light does it now this is a as i said this ship is highly optimized which is something i aspire to do to keep my ship small as possible but at the same time, you have to get things absolutely perfect in order to make this mission work, it seems. Let's see if I manage it. We carry on. We get our injection. We get our transmuner injection. And now all that remains really is for us to warp. To warp our way to the moon. What's up with the fuel? I'm, I'm, at this point in time, I'm considering moving fuel from the lander into the command module just for now. Oh yeah, we also should probably lower our periapsis. Although you don't, you never know. You never know if that was a good idea or a bad idea. That's something that uh, I keep on questioning myself about. But anyway, we warp, we reach our apoapsis, and then our sphere of influence encounter, and now we're falling towards the moon. Now we need to burn at the periapsis. So we set up our our target, and it tells us that we have. 261.2 meters per second of delta v that we needed to shift in order to complete this burn now if you look at our fuel gauge that seems like an awful lot compared to how small compared to how little fuel we actually have in this fuel tank but we're going to try it and we're going to see how far we get i think i trust my ability to think on the spot i don't know but here we go pointing retrograde towards the blue reticule and we see what happens the fuel runs out and that's what happens we have we haven't even burnt half of the delta v off and yet the fuel has run out what can we do well land the fuel let's try and quickly put this into the command module fuel tanks just grab as much fuel as we can and put it in there now the problem is these fuel tanks are squashed together that doesn't make it easy to actually get fuel out of them. But nonetheless, we get it right down. We've got 24 meters per second left, so we can just skip through that. And um, we don't really have any fuel left in our lander, do we? Not at all. Now, there's probably some fuel still in there. And in fact, there probably was, even though we've decoupled it. I didn't realize, because we saw the resources tab, it did actually have fuel still displaying. And then when we decoupled that, that fuel was lost. So... We have no liquid fuel or oxidizer left in the ship. What are we going to do? We do have one resource left, and that's monopropellant. Well, we also have electricity, but, you know, we haven't got an ion engine or xenon gas. That's not going to happen. But uh, we have RCS fuel left. Now, they fixed the RCS, uh, the problem, the bad balancing with RCS in version 0.18.2. So it's a lot less efficient now, and it gives you a lot less bang for your buck. But I think we might be able to do this. Instead of waiting in low moon orbit, waiting for a rescue ship to come pick us up and drag us home shamedly, 
we are actually going to attempt to take this thing home and land this crew, our brave Matza Kerman, or Matza, or something, we're going to bravely attempt to send this guy home, using just RCS. Now, if we think that RCS is balanced right now, this may be a contributing argument against that. The fact that we have two fuel tanks and yet we can shift 260 something meters per second of delta V. It's probably not that ridiculous, in fact. And I don't think that this means RCS isn't unbalanced. What, what I'm doing here now is trying to drain from the front tank first. So you can see, I've got the, the uh, right clickable context menus open, transferring fuel from the front tank to the command module tank whilst burning it. So we end up with, our, with just fuel being taken from the first one. Now what I'm thinking is that I don't expect to have much fuel left after this, because come on, it's two tanks of RCS and we're trying to do this massive burn. So what I'm thinking is that as soon as possible, we'll be able to empty the first tank, decouple the lander, just leave it in the low moon orbit, and then just carry on with the command module fuel tank. But it turns out, due to how we are in decreasing the load by throwing RCS fuel out the back, we actually have enough fuel just in this one tank to push this entire ship all the way out of the moon's orbit into a Kerbin orbit and to decrease our periapsis until we are left with no periapsis at all until our periapsis is below the atmosphere of Kerbin and into the ground meaning that we do actually have a trajectory straight down onto the surface and we have two working parachutes now the thing is, we have two working parachutes, right? So I was thinking, I was actually considering seriously bringing this entire ship in. But this is a space program. And that's the very reason why I did this in the first place. Why I think this video was successful. We saved the guy's life. We successfully took him to moon orbit and we successfully got him home. <laughs> I like how that decoupled and smashed him into the lander. Yeah, we successfully brought him home, but... um. Yeah, maybe maybe there might be some damage on the heat shield. You never know, he could burn up in the atmosphere. But um, we didn't complete the mission. And this is a test pilot video, which doesn't by nature have to have the mission completed. It is safe to say this ship is brilliant. It is extremely well optimized. And if it is capable of doing the mission, which I think it is in the correct hands, and I doubt Alan would have sent it in if it wasn't. If it's capable of doing the mission, then it's the one of the best ships I've ever seen and I really want to play with it more in the future. But we managed to save the guy, we managed to do half of the mission successfully, and that, I think, shows how good the ship is, that on my first time, I can do this. Thanks for watching, and I shall see you all next time.